Would you ever use the term slope duro? No. This is the 2022 Specialized Status 160 mountain bike. The price? $3,000. Is it status? Status? Uh, this is the Status 160. So you, so you know the travel in this bike? Yes. Okay, that's good. 160 front and rear, even. This is Vital Bike Tester Johnny. He's been riding for almost 20 years, and he's really good at it. Vital gave Johnny the specialized status to test because he's a ripper. He's a big guy. How tall are you? 6'4". How heavy are you? 225. And he knows the nerd stuff because he's a professional bicycle mechanic. <laughs> Johnny also recently tested the specialized stump jumper Evo alloy for us. He liked the stump jumper so much that he bought a carbon version of the Evo and customized the build. So he was the perfect person to see how this $3,000 status compares to a similar bike that's two or three times the price. There are two models of specialized status for 2022. One with 160 millimeters of travel, the one we tested, or a 140 millimeter travel option. They are alloy frame only, come in mixed wheel size only, and are offered in just one build package at $3,000. There's a geometry adjust flip chip, threaded bottom bracket, internal cable routing, boost rear hub, and five size options. Johnny is on size S5, the largest of the bunch. Oh yeah, sick. <laughs> if you were a YouTubist, what would you call your YouTube channel? Welcome back to the channel. The weight of our test bike is 33 pounds, 12 ounces without pedals. Status can also be purchased from Specialized.com and shipped to your door if you don't want to go to a Specialized dealer to get one. This is something new from the Big Red S. <laughs> the flip chip went unused in our test because of the generally technical rocky riding in the Phoenix area that Johnny does. Johnny stayed in the high setting with a 63.7 degree head angle and 347 millimeter bottom bracket height to avoid pedal strikes. Flip the chip to low and slacken half a degree of head angle and drop nine mils in BB height. The size S5 has a lengthy 515 millimeter reach and stock bar width it's 800 millimeters, which was trimmed down to 780 mils for testing, while stack was raised up five millimeters to reduce a bit of that stretched out feeling that Johnny felt during setup. How's your thumb knuckle right there? Uh, it's bleeding, or it was earlier. Yeah, there, little, little slice on there. The specialized lever is quite sharp, so if it was my bike, I'd probably take a file to that. 290 PSI and 28% sag was the sweet spot for the Fox Performance Float X shock and the Fox Rhythm 36 fork was at 115 PSI with compression adjustment wide open. The Status is a simple, straightforward bike at a decent price. So how does it ride? I'll give you a summary of Johnny's impressions here, but you can go into full detail on vitalmtb.com to read Johnny's words in his written report. Hey, can you ask the viewers to smash the like button? Hey guys, be sure to subscribe and smash that like button. With a focus on fun, pointing the status downhill is where the bike comes alive. Getting up to speed and holding that speed felt comfortable. Initial concerns about the long reach were alleviated after the first lap, noting a stable riding position on the bike. The short chain stays made direction changes a breeze, and Johnny found himself pointing the bike at side hits more often than not. He said riding the bike casually feels just as rewarding as pushing it to the limit. Rear suspension is supple and comfortable for a variety of trail types. The bike was quite calm through the chatter and square edge hits, and it charged rough sections. The rear end does have a less settled feeling than a full 29-inch wheeled bike, as expected, and though it breaks free more easily with that smaller back wheel, the status remains predictable. While the Fox Performance Float X Shock does not have a low-speed compression adjustment, there was plenty of support through transitions and hitting jumps proved to be just as fun as expected. The high geometry setting had no negative impact on stability. As Johnny set his third fastest time on one of his test tracks while still feeling competent on traverses and climbs. I was expecting it to climb a lot worse because I'd heard that they're not very good at climbing, but I mean, I, I got up pretty much everything at South Mountain I normally would, which roll the footage. <laughs> Think anyone who buys this bike cares about how it climbs? Probably not. Oh, 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 oh. There you go. 
<laughs> On climbs, the pedaling position feels more relaxed than the Stump Jumper Evo, and climbing pace was generally slower. The short rear end does allow the front wheel to lift easily, making technical climbing a bit more challenging. But, for an entry-level build kit, weight perception feels surprisingly light on trail. The bike feels a bit sluggish when pointed uphill, but that feeling is likely due to the relaxed geometry more than its weight. The price point of the status certainly offers a solid bang for the buck. The Fox Rhythm 36 fork paired with Float X Performance rear shock was impressive. The ride quality was terrific in everything from mellow terrain to blitzing the gnarliest rock gardens. The Fox 36 was a standout feature of the ride quality and served as a reminder to not rule it out as a suspension option when looking for a new bike. Riders may benefit from its simplicity and easy setup process, leaving less room for error. Fork performance was phenomenal across all types of riding, with our only concern being long-term durability. Yeah, the durability concerns, we got a little bit of knocking and a little oil leaking out of the fork there on the air spring side, which, yeah, I mean, a little concerning. The fork feels great, so not sure why that's happening, probably just being 225 and 6'4" in Arizona. Regular service will be important with this fork. The SRAM NX Eagle drivetrain was quite surprising this time around because it was issue free during the test. The group performed smoothly even while shifting under load. In the past, however, we've had NX derailers develop play on other test bikes and the cogs on the status started showing signs of wear relatively quickly. So long-term durability is a concern here. Using NX, the rider is locked into the HG Freehub body so upgrading the cassette to a GX or something nicer would require a new rear hub with an XD driver. Specialized Butcher 2.3 grid trail front and rear tires in the T9 compound offered great traction. Our big dude and big rocks sliced the rear tire almost immediately though on one of the first ascents, so he beefed up the rear to an equivalent Butcher 2.3 grid with gravity casing for the remainder of the test. Look, she blows. Nice little spot on the rim too. Oof. So you and Specialized Trail casings don't get along that great? No. Uh, what are you doing now then? You gotta put the gravity casing. You gotta put the big dogs on. Nothing a crescent wrench and some motivation can't fix. Creaking after that ride. The Revolve Traverse wheel set uses Specialized Revolve branded hubs seem to be a little bit nicer than the standard three pawl hubs we've come to expect on an entry-level build kit. The rear hub did excrete a good amount, if not all of the grease, from the free hub body onto the shell, however. There was a creaking noise under load which seemed to be related to the free hub body cassette interface. The rim stayed straight the entire time, but they earned a flat spot during that tire slice incident and another more serious dent in the rim after a botched line at high speed. SRAM's Code R brakes offered plenty of modulation and stopping power for the majority of the test period. They would benefit from a bleed after a bit of ride time, as the lever throw came quite close to the bar after a fair number of steep descents. Descending the bike is very quiet, with the normal noises expected from rocks and trail debris hitting the down tube of an aluminum frame. Pivot bolts were checked halfway through the test, with a few needing to be retorqued, but after that, all the bolts remained snug for the entire duration. Despite the number of rocks that have bounced off this down tube, there are zero dents and very few noticeable paint chips. How tall are you? What makes the status rad is the foundation it gives a rider to build off of. The stock build kit functions great for most riders, and as things wear out, upgrades are easy to consider thanks to the relatively affordable price point of the bike. There may be a bit more maintenance required with the lower tier parts, but the status is an extremely diverse and capable bike that will open the door to aggressive riding for beginners or pros alike. For those looking for a more trail-oriented bike with 29-inch wheels, more geometry adjustability, and internal frame storage, the Stump Jumper Evo Comp Alloy features the exact same build as the Status for $4,000. If you want to go for a ground-up build, the Status frame-only price is a respectable $1,400, and that includes the Fox Float X Shock. Out of the box, is there anything you would change on it right away? Uh, probably just like bar and stem, like a little more back sweep, and then tires, 100% change the rear tire. Do you think the tires are good for someone smaller? 
think like the trail casing's okay? Yeah, it's probably fine. Okay. If you don't live in Arizona and you're not a burly boy, you'd be fine. If your focus is fun on local loops or days at the bike park, Specialized Status 160 comes highly recommended by Vital MTB with a 4.5 out of 5 star rating. I want to thank you guys for subscribing and smashing that like button. It really helps out the channel. Um, helps us bring you the content. <laughs> I know, look at how sick is that? Is it true you built all these jumps? Absolutely not. <laughs> Big shout out to Tony and Dakota, Suski, and any other OGs who built all this. I'm just taking care of it. You guys go to a set of jumps, make sure you water them. It's sweet. <laughs>